Good morning. Good morning. Everybody. Um, thank you, Joe, for, for having me and uh, for the African Center for Strategy Studies as the NDU for having this program. I think when I look around and I saw the response and the, the level of turnout for this uh, event, uh, to me, I, I can see that, yes, we, when I say we, I mean Nigerians, which means we are not alone in the fight against uh, this evil that bef uh, that is now befitting us. Uh, we are not alone in the fighting the, this terror, and we are not alone. I can see that we are not alone. Um, because Nigerians, we are good people, very good people, proud people, very proud, and resilient. Um, I want to start by saying uh, my focus will be based on the local uh, initiatives and uh, what we do to uh, to see what we can do to mitigate these very issues on ground and um, looking at our programs in northern Nigeria and beyond. Uh, I, I want to give a, a very brief uh, history of myself. Um, Michael Femi Shudikbo. I'm from the south. I'm from, I'm from the Yoruba land, as the partner said. I'm from the southwest. I was born in southwest, but I've lived in the north for almost 30 years now. I live in Kano. Kano to me is more or less like it's home to me. Despite all the happenings, it's home to me. And I've never lived outside Kano for the past 28 years, more than a month. I've never lived outside Kano more than a month for the past 28 years. And um, if you look at what is happening in Nigeria, I've said I find out the issue of identity. I think it's one of the key factors, which I, I don't want to. Uh, Looking at uh, the previous speakers, I don't want to repeat what they, they've said, but I want to just build on what they've said. Uh, looking at the issue of identity is a very crucial issue in Nigeria. Nobody cares where, who you are or what you can do, but where do you come from? Are you from the north or from the south? Are you a Christian or Muslim? I think that is a major uh, factor uh, working against Nigerians having a focus, having a unified focus to fight this menace. We don't have that uh, national cohesion. We don't have that national unity. We don't have that one voice to look at um, the, the issue that we have at hand. Why am I saying this? Uh, for those of us in the north, we may see Boko Haram as probably a messiah. And probably those in the south will see us, uh, northerners trying to, to exert power. And that's the issue in Nigeria. If you look at uh, papers in Nigeria, the same story, the same issue, the same event, but different interpretations. Why? Objectivity, even, even among the media. I'm not, this is not to castigate the media, but it's the Nigerian factor of not seeing things the way it is, but looking at it from a north or south, Christian or Muslim. And that's why we are where we are today. Because we don't have that national focus, national uh, solution to, to the problems. It's one of the key factors. Uh, nine years ago, that was in 2004, there was a riot, there was a crisis in, the, in, um, in Plateau State, Shendam Yewa crisis. That was in May 11, to be precise. And there was a uh, repressive attack in Kano, where I live. And um, I was attacked, my house was burnt, my car was burnt right in my compound. And here in Kano, I've lived for then for almost 20 years. I look at myself, when I go home, the so-called home in the south, I'm seen as a Kano man. And in Kano, here I'm seen as, as, a, as a stranger, as a non indigenous to be precise. It's, it's this very, the, the issue of identity, the burning issues in me that who am I? That spoiled me and others who are also, um, we call ourselves survivors, we are not victims of crisis. And we came together and we formed the Peace Initiative Network. That's how the, uh, the initiative came to being in 2004. And where I was hiding for four hours while the crisis was going on, I could see that it was young people with hatred, which you can see anger in them. You can see that, yes, these guys, no hope. And that's why our program 
focus mainly on the youth to see how we can give them a new life, how we can refocus their life, how we can also refocus their energy instead of looking at secular identity, but seeing themselves as national, as Nigerians. Even beyond that, seeing themselves as a global citizen, these are the things we do. And uh, in 2006, May 2006, Children's Day in Nigeria, May 27, to be precise, we um, care about the program called Peace Club. Uh, it was uh, with the support from the British Council in Kano, we, we started the program with 50 members from seven schools. That was in Kano. <clears throat> and over the years, we, we have about, from four states now, we have about almost 8,000 members, that's debris members. But we've reached out to more than, more, more than that. <clears throat> what we do in Peace Club uh, programs, we, the major aim is to, uh, to promote dialogue and to uh, do tolerance and understanding through peace, through peace education. We have, we, we have two sessions. We have peace education sessions and we also have uh, sports sessions. And why do we decide sports? Because we know Nigerians, uh, the only thing that unites us is when we are playing football, when Nigeria is playing soccer. <laughs> so we look at soccer to Nigerians is a unifying factor and we look at that, okay, we can do that to reach out to the young people. That's the language they, un they understand, language of soccer, of football, of sports. And that's how we started. We use football, we, use, uh, we, are, we have monthly meetings, we also have weekly meetings in schools. That was in, when we started. But it has gone beyond that now. We, we also have um, a civic education program for youth leaders, where we also bring leaders to uh, talk to them. Issue of, um, it goes beyond even the football or basketball, but teaching them leadership skills, how they can be uh, useful to their communities not seeing themselves as a Yoruba or Hausa or Fulani, or, but seeing themselves as a Nigerians, because I'm seeing myself as a, as a case study, the issue of identity, which we all... So, the major uh, objectives of our programs is to promote interaction between young people from various backgrounds and to ease ethno-religious uh, tensions. And two, we also look at uh, the, uh, to strengthen a peaceful society in Nigeria because we know the young people, we say they are the leaders of tomorrow, but we say no, we are leaders of today and we can take, we can take charge of today through our actions and through our inactions. So uh, we also add members to develop leadership skills, as I've said, um, problem uh, solving skills, critical thinking skills that can also enhance them to, make, to become a better person and to promote friendship and improve understanding among young people in Nigeria. And that's what we do. And we'll be doing this uh, with the help of uh, the British Council in, in, in Kano and with the help of um, uh, the Generation for Peace in Jordan. We have this uh, support to you from Jordan where we, and our activities, as I've said, peace education, sports, and the weekly, uh, so we also have summer uh, peace camp during summer mm -hmm. where we bring uh, members from various backgrounds together to see how we can also look at issue of peace in Nigeria and through cultural exchange. Uh, we not only do that, we also look at, um, in our peace ed uh, education program, we also look at, we do advocacy events where we bring, we, we organize um, interfaith dialogue among uh, peoples in the community, bringing leaders from religious groups, leaders from the uh, communities to see how we can also enhance the capacity of the young people, to teach them to to go beyond, to look beyond the, the uh, issue of uh, stereotypes or prejudice that are on ground, because we know it's a major factor in Nigeria. And that's why the groups like Boko Haram or other uh, the extremist group could do that, could, could use all these deep-rooted and deep-seated, uh, uh, age-long uh, grievances to, 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 cause, uh, to cause harm. If I would just maybe, uh, go down memory lane when the, the, we have the first um, attack in Kano, that was in uh, January uh, 20, 2021 in Kano. Uh, I think about two, three hours before the, before the event, uh, before the incident, it was like uh, we, we had some leaflets going around this city. There are two, uh, two leaflets, one for membership to join the group as the, the, the Islamist uh, militant, and then the other uh, leaflet specifying that who are their targets? Oh, they have the security agencies, the Christians, 
and other people, and other even Muslims that maybe have, uh, that are working with government or that have sympathy for government that are against the group. So the issue is not the issue of, um, uh, in Nigeria now, it's not issue of Christian Muslim, no. It's not issue of Muslim, uh, Christian Muslim, no, it's not that. It's, it's, it's beyond that. And, but what they want to do, I thought what the Boko Haram group want to do is to tap into such you know, uh, ethno-religious divides, which is very common, especially in the northern Nigeria, to see how they can recruit members. And knowing fully well that okay, even in northern Nigeria, we are the, you know, the, the northern, African northern Nigerians, I know as a Muslim, they are very passionate about their religion, and they love their religion. And that's why they want to see how they can tap into such um, energy to see how they can regroup. But it wasn't like that. When the ships were down, the first day, we had more casualties among the Aousas Fulani, among the Muslims. The majority of people that died that day, they were the indigents, not the non-indigents, and not the Christians. And that sent a very strong signal to the, even to the uh, indigent that no, these groups, are they really the people that we thought they are? Because initially people were like, I mean, among the, tally, among the, the low, as the down training people, the, the so-called Talakawas, they were like, these groups are coming to right the wrongs of the government, of inefficiency, of corruption, of, because that was the, the message, that they are coming with the you know, message of Islam, message of Sharia, everything will be based on Sharia law. But when the chiefs were down, as I said, it was like, it was not what they, they preach. And we saw that people that died are mainly the outside of Finland, not even the Christians, of which I'm on. I was, I was around, and we, we saw what happened. And I will tell you, if you ask me to come here and talk even now, that's what I'm saying now, two years ago, I would never try it. Because we, nobody is ready to mention that name, B to clear of H. Because you, are, you, don't, you don't even know. Your neighbors, you don't know whether he's a member or not, because it was like, if you just want maybe to talk, don't, 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 don't say. Because it was like, everyone was like, we were like, what is happening? Even your neighbors, you don't trust, you don't even know. You, don't, you can't trust your neighbors. You can only talk within your family members, and when you come out, you don't, you don't see any neighbor, you're like, nobody's talking. But I'll tell you now, we are talking. And we are really engaging. The Christians, the Muslims, the indigents, everybody's in talking and we are looking at way out. And I thank God I, I came, I saw, it's as if I'm in Nigeria because I can see the level of, the tunnel was so, to me, very impressive and I'm very, very, I'm very happy for this. And this is a message I'm taking home that we are not alone in this battle. We have other people with us fighting this battle. So as I've said, you don't talk. And that was the, the that, I don't know. The, the, the trauma, the trauma of uh, what happened is more, is more of a, war, a civil war because it's, it's, a, it's, another, it's, it's a different warfare, it's a, war, a different ball game that we don't even know because this very, uh, is, is very strange to us. Terrorism, it, it's our thing we saw on, on, our, you know, on televisions on happening in Afghanistan, in Iran, Iraq, but it's now back home, it's now with us at home. You can see that you are just on the street. You can't go straight. You have to be living. And even those days, when you have, because the mechanism they used then was to use the, the, the issue of, uh, we have uh, this cyclist. You see, there were just two people on the, on, the, on the bike. The real guy would, at the back, just like they're just snipers, just killing, like that. And it goes across everybody, not only just saying, maybe selecting. Although they may be talking of uh, looking out for the Christians, or, but in their killings, if you are a Muslim, you are against them, they go for you. But I'll tell you what really happened, like in Kano, where I stay and where I live, I, I, I would say our governor, our, our leader in the north, in, in Kano, I would will, I will just say yes, they did wonderfully well. Because one of the means we, uh, uh, the government used in Kano, especially in Kano, to Bust their, 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 their group was if any any house owner or landlord, if we found any uh, any uh, Boko Haram member or suspended members in your in your house, the house would be demolished. And 
it also be that even the the community, the economic, the um, business community also, they also play a very leading role because it also affects business. Nobody is coming to Kano again to, to, to do business from Niger, from Chad, from the South. Everybody is just moving. Even the, everybody is just living. But the business community also came around and said, no, this will not happen. Kano is known for commerce. The Northern Nigeria is known for this, and business is our, you know, is, it, that's, the, that's the, the mainstay of the North. And they all came, and that's where we started having people reporting silently to the government. Because we know these are, these are, not, these are not indigenous, these are not outsiders, these are not Nigerians. I would say that, because if you are Nigerians, you have the love for Nigerians, you will not, do, you will not try what these guys are doing. So, we said having people reporting, you know, if you have any funny movement in your, in your community, you report to the police or to the government, and, and that's how they left Kano. But I won't say they left completely, but because we still have some maybe at times just come in and, but in Kano, in, we know how to handle our issues. And we thank God, we also are very happy that we are having people here have given us that assurance that yes, we are not alone. And what I want to say again is that being that is something that's so new, even the security forces, the way they handle the issues was so, 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 so terrific. Because then you could just be going on the street and then you just see yourself down. You were just total brute force, which was not good, but which we, 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 with what is happening now, just like what uh, Sman Kubo said, the, the military uh, personnel needs to be trained because this is a new, uh, it's a new ball game to them. They don't know how to handle this. And even up to now, uh, one of the main reasons where we have this thing going on is that even the issue of intelligence, lack of intelligence, the government up to now are not even sure who are the, who, who are the, who are the sponsors. And of which, by now, we should know who are the, we should we, we should have all the all these details. Mm. But the government are not even they are not they are not sure. Like when we have the um, the president, the government uh, established the the dialogue committee to look at uh, to see how they can talk to uh, to the group. For that, the splinter groups because they also have splinter groups because with what happened, we can talk of uh, four or five Boko Haram's in Nigeria. Not only the, the real one that we were everybody saying no, these are these are terrorists, no, but you also have the criminals using that to perpetrate their crime. We also have uh, the probably the, even the business guys maybe trying to um, you know vend it personal business uh, deals and they just go around and then send people to assassinate their their opponent or their business partners. And we also have uh, the politicians that will not we can't say no because most of these guys who are also used as political talks during. Campaign and they have they are they are armed. Um, they also, we also have uh, the uh, yeti politicians because like what happened in Kano, where we have the two members of the uh, House of Assembly killed. At the end of the day, when the we, we, the killers, they were just young boys giving how much? I think thirty thousand dollars and naira. Not even in food. I think they were giving ten thousand naira. That is less than hundred hundred dollar to go and kill. You can see the level of, I don't say poverty, but just mind, they are, they are disjointed. Their mind is twisted. And that's what we do in our, in our group, to see how we can, we, we teach the young people through peace education, through sports. And I will have some uh, slides which I maybe I want to just flip through to see what the program is all about. Good. You can try to keep it. Yeah. So we have... Um, Yes, the peace law programs when it started. Now we've gone beyond the uh, four states in Nigeria. We have we are in Gombe, Kano, in Kaduna, and Plateau State. As I remember, as you can see, cut across all ethnic groups. We also have boys and girls. These are part of the sports session we do. Girls, and why we do that? Because girls and ball. So, and we don't want it to miss both of the girls because of the environment. In, in, in our environment, we, we have that. Uh, yeah. 
workers. This is where we also train uh, instructors, as teachers in schools, to us as a peace club instructors. These are doing tra tra training. Then we also uh, we uh, celebrate the International Day of Peace every year. You can see, you can see the members in their area from various uh, communities. You can see very colorful. You can see the Nigerians are very colorful people. <laughs> so these are young people, and I will tell you, these guys, some of them are, they are now, they are guys, they are some of them are in, in in US, in the UK, all over the world, and they are passing the message. This is one of the during the International Day of Peace. You can see the young people presenting papers. See. So every an annual event we do every year.